In this video, I'm going to show you how to install these adjustable rear control arms from Whiteline Performance on a second generation Subaru Forester. This will also work with the first generation of Forester. Let's get into it. Now I'm only going to show you one side because you can actually do the same process for either side. All we have to do is jack up the car first and take off our wheel using a 19 millimeter socket. Then once our wheel is off, we can take care of our end link. And mine is already disconnected, so I don't have to do it, but all you need is a 14 millimeter wrench or socket on the nut and a 14 millimeter wrench on the ball joint side, and that can get the end link off for you. Then we have this 19 millimeter bolt here on the knuckle, then a 22 millimeter bolt and a 17 millimeter bolt, both with 17 millimeter nuts. We want to get a wrench on this back bolt here. You can undo the bracket on this brake hose, but I wasn't able to. So I was able to slip a wrench on the back of it, no problem. Then unfortunately, my bolt was very stuck. It was even bending my breaker bar, but I finally got it with a ratchet and a pipe and you can hear just how bad that bolt was stuck. But after a little bit of elbow grease, we can get that nut off and there is a washer that comes with it as well. And that's the washer. Now we can start tapping out our knuckle bolt. However, you will have some binding issues with the rear arm. So it's easiest to get that rear arm out of the subframe first. So 22 millimeter socket on the bolt and 17 millimeter wrench on the back. You have a nut and two washers. One of those washers is a cammed washer. And you'll see that in just a second. That needs to come off as well. That goes into the subframe to help with the alignment of that bolt, because this is an alignment bolt. That bolt does have a cammed portion to it, as you can see there. Then once that bolt is out, we can release the arm from the subframe, and then we can get our knuckle bolt out, and it should come out way easier now. Then we slide that bolt out, and that bolt will have a washer on it as well take that washer off and I'm gonna clean up this bolt just because it was hard to take out I don't want it to be hard to remove later then on to the front arm you have this little dust cover that's on there and there's a little washer with some tabs on it behind it and that's when it sort of locks on to so make sure you put it in the right orientation when you put it back together then we need to slip a 17 millimeter socket on the head of the bolt and it's really tight. You can remove the axle if you want to, but you really don't have to. I just used a thin ratchet with a shallow socket and I was able to squeeze it in there. You might have to jack the hub up to get the axle out of the way. But once you do that and you break the nut or the bolt free, you can then use a ratcheting wrench to get the bolt loose the rest of the way and get that nut and washer off and then you can spin the nut off. And don't forget that washer. Then we can take out the bolt, which this is again gonna be a little tough. You're gonna have to jack up the hub to move that axle around to clearance it a little bit better. I also had to use a pry bar to sort of bend the subframe to make it easier. Then we can take our new arms and adjust them to the length of our stock arms. Now I do want you to take note here when you are setting up these arms and you'll notice that the bolt holes are not the same size on each end. So you can see with this front one here, we have a small one on the left side and a large on the right. You want the large one to go where the knuckle goes because the knuckle bolt is bigger. Now we can install the new control arms. What you want to do with this front one is make sure that you put the knuckle side up in position first because your trailing arm goes underneath where the control arm goes. And if you mess it up, you'll have to readjust it and it, it'll be a huge annoyance. So just make sure you put it over the trailing arm. Again, jack the hub up, slide the bolt in, and then you can put that washer, that lock washer, and the nut back on. And once you get through that, the hard part is over, in my opinion. So you do that, you can then put the rear arm on the subframe as well. Then we can slide the bolt back in and put the washers back on and the nut back on and tighten that up as well.
I also went ahead and put that dust boot cover back on, which you could have done that before you put the rear arm on. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure it's on before you uh, complete this job. Then we'll put the knuckle bolt back in and tighten down all of our nuts for adjustment. You are going to have to take it for an alignment, so you don't have to go too crazy, but make sure everything is tight. You're also going to want to torque your bolts on the subframe and the knuckle. I'll leave up on the screen all the torque specs that you need. That front one will be a bit difficult, so just try the best you can to get it as tight as possible. Again, you're gonna need to bring it in for an alignment anyway. Then after that, we can pop our wheel and lug nuts back on. You can also reinstall your end links here as well. The torque for those nuts will be 33 foot-pounds. My car is lifted, so I can't actually use my end links, so I'm leaving mine out. Once we remove our jack stand and then lower our car back on the ground, we can then torque our lug nuts to 65 foot-pounds. And once we've done that, the job is complete. That is how you install the white line rear control arms on a first or second gen Subaru Forester. If you want to learn more about the parts in this video and why I'm installing them, you can click on the video right here to learn more about other parts you may need to install on your lifted Subaru. And I'll catch you guys over there.